It is the 21st of August, and this day in Baptist history, our reading is censored by men, approved by God. Our passage of scripture is 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. The work of the American Baptist Home Mission Society lacked the imagined glamour of sending missionaries across the seas to exotic locations. But it was a needed ministry in the days of the expansion of our republic. To be sure, it was not necessary for the home missionaries to conquer new languages, nor to hazard their lives in many dangers of the unknown. However, there were many adver adversaries and difficulties, not the least of which was the energetic harping of anti-missionary critics in the homeland. Jacob Bauer reported that devout followers of Christ who believed the missionaries' work was non-scriptural liked to hear missionaries preach and profess to be personally fond of them. But when the missionaries reminded those believers that the laborer is worthy of his hire and proposed an offering for expenses, the hearers were offended and called the missionaries money hunters and beggar missionaries. Under such circumstances, Bauer said the poor missionary had to wear out his clothes his horse, his saddle, his body, lungs, and voice, and spend his whole living while receiving nothing from those who pretended to love him so well. Another of the missionaries painted a graphic verbal picture of his experiences when he wrote, and I quote, Fancy a man obliged through, through a rough country and over miserable roads to travel from 30 to 50 miles a day without where to lay his head, to preach perhaps to ten or a dozen members in open houses and be exposed and maligned by those calling themselves the children of God and accused of preaching for lucre's sake and you have some idea of a missionary." End of quote. It is encouraging to peruse the record then realize that in the face of opposition 49 missionaries were commissioned and serving in ten states or territories, and one labored in Canada in the first year of the history of the Home Mission Society. To obtain a more accurate picture of the territory into which these men of God volunteered to serve, let me mention A.B. Freeman, who, on September 4, 1833, was appointed to serve in Chicago. On his arrival, he was shocked to discover Indian, Indians walking the streets of the village. He rallied the few Baptists and soon they built a church edifice. In October, he organized the first Baptist church of the Northwest beyond Peoria. Spencer Clack, his wife and six children were appointed on August 21st, 1832 to serve in Missouri. His annual compensa compensation was fixed a month later at $400. Less than eight full months later, Spencer Clack died in Palmyra, Missouri of cholera. On June 4, 1833, the day of his death, he wrote his last report to the society. I quote a portion of his letter here, and I quote, Dear brother, going, I am dying. Since my last communication to you, I've had much affliction in my family. I want you to pay for my, up my full salary for the year out, else my family must suffer. My trust is in the Lord. He is able to strengthen me and uphold me in my dying hour. Don't give up the ship. You are engaged in a good cause. You will meet with opposition, fear not. I have honestly, faithfully, and conscientiously defended the cause, not with the object of making money, for I have sustained monetary losses, but for the glory of God and of his cause. Say to all the missionaries to be faithful and bear hardships as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. The mission cause is the cause of God. My affectionate regard to the churches. Tell Brother Vardaman I want him to preach my funeral sermon in Palmyra. I am dying. Into the hands of God I resign my spirit. End of quote. And the letter was signed by the man of God. The letter was received by the mission board, but the following edition was included for Mr. W. H. Holmes, a member of the Palmyra Church. And I quote, in a few minutes after dictating the foregoing letter with the most perfect resignation to the will of God, Brother Clack breathed his last. Thus has our community and the missionary cause lost an efficient and active member. Two days after the death of Brother Clack, his wife died of the same disorder, leaving a helpless 
and destitute family of six small children. Well, a good man has fallen, the godly man ceaseth, a standard bearer fainteth, but he fell on his high place and at his post, encouraging his companions in arms to be faithful soldiers, and breathing only loyalty to his king and love to his cause. End of quote. The name of Spencer Clack has been forgotten in our day, but he was the first of the home missionaries to give his life in his labor of love for our Lord. He had no insurance and no fortune to leave his family, but surely a great will be his reward in heaven. We rejoice in the vision of fine young men who are going to foreign countries, but we must be reminded that there are many places in America that are in need of solid Bible-believing Baptist churches. Furthermore, properly instructed congregations in small Baptist churches that dot the landscape have a vital part in supplying the personnel, equipping such ambassadors to Christ, and supporting their efforts to reach the world in this generation. To God be the glory.